Hello everyone, this is Valley Hockey Talks. Uh, I have a breaking news update for everyone on an RFA situation. Uh, Zach Wierenski from the Columbus Blue Jackets has signed a three-year, $15 million contract with a cap hit of $5 million per year. Uh, it's going to be structured so he's making around four the first couple years and then over six the, next, the third year. Um, I think it's a great signing. I think Zach Wierenski is one of the top defensemen in the NHL. He's an amazing offensive defenseman. In his rookie year, he actually scored more goals than Rasmus Dahlin. And it kind of went under the radar because Dahlin was nominated for a um, Calder Trophy this year, and Wierenski wasn't. Uh, but anyways, Wierenski's been in the league for three years. He's been a very solid player. He plays on the top pairing with Seth Jones, plays power play time. And he uh, averaged around 22 minutes, 23 minutes a night for ice time. So that's a lot of time to be logging on the back end for Columbus. And I think it's a very fair deal. Um, three years is a nice number for the team and for the player. Um, that way, when he becomes a UFA at the end of the deal, uh, he can really cash in if his production goes up. And if it goes down, then he can stick with the same sort of uh, cap value at $5 million per year. Um, last week, John Tortorella made some comments saying that he would be very disgusted if Zach Wierenski missed one day of camp. John Tortorella, of course, is always very outspoken says what's on his mind. Um, he should be very happy now that Wierenski will be making it to camp and will be going through the whole camp process and all of the exhibition games and all that fun stuff. <clears throat> so Tortorella can really um, set his culture in place. Now this really sets the market for other UFAs in the same situation as Wierenski was. So a guy like Charlie McAvoy and another one like Ivan Provorov are both RFAs. So Charlie McAvoy, as everyone knows, plays for the Boston Bruins. He's, he got 28 points in 54 games this year. And he led the te his team in ice time at 22 minutes and 10 seconds. And he's 21 years old. Wierenski is 22 years old, so there's a good comparison. Wierenski had 44 points in 82 games. And he had 22, 23 minutes of an ice time. So they both have similar ice time. Uh, their point production... Uh, it would be fairly similar if McAvoy played a full 82 games. Um, so I would think this would really make it easy for the Bruins to negotiate McAvoy's contract. Because they could say, well, um, you play around the same amount of minutes, you get around the same amount of points, you're around the same age, you actually have one less uh, year played in the NHL. So maybe they give McAvoy like a four-year deal instead of the three-year deal at around $5 million. It's probably somewhere between uh, 5 and $6 million for McAvoy, I would say. And that'd be fair. Um, the other guy I mentioned was Ivan Provorov, who plays for the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, he's their number one defenseman as well. He's 22 years old, and he plays around 25 minutes of ice time per game, which is actually more than Wierenski and McAvoy. Um, however, he had a pretty rough season last year with only 26 points in 82 games, um, compared to his previous year where he actually had 41 points in 82 games. So he's a little bit more tricky because... He was a highly touted prospect coming in. Um, he's a bigger guy. He's strong. He plays lots of minutes, penalty kill. Um, and he, can't, he has shown he can put the points up, but last year he didn't have a great year. So I would say he'd be right around that area between 4 and 5.5 .5 million as well. Probably 3, 4, maybe even 5 years if they could get him at that. But I'd be okay with any of those. I'd probably be happy at 5. Same as Wierenski. 3 years, 15 million would be pretty perfect for Provorov. So overall, it was a great signing for the Blue Jackets, um, especially since most of the high-end UFAs from the Blue Jackets left, like Duchesne, Bobrovsky, and Panarin. Um, so it's good to see guys staying in town. And then that way, um, other players that, you know, want to sign there or come there in free agency don't leave, or there's not a culture of leaving, not paying their players. So that's great to see for the, any Blue Jackets fans. Um, other notable RFAs still left on the market include Mitch Marner, of course, uh, Patrick Laine, Brock Besser, uh, Matthew Kachuk, Mika Rantanen. Um, so on this channel, I'm going to try to provide um, updates when I can, try to do it the same day um, when these guys sign and give you the breakdown. And hopefully you enjoy my videos. And if you do, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.